less than 10 years ago, controlling a computer with hand gestures was science fiction. Well, it looks like the future is here. Okay, this version is a bit basic, and you might not have this in your living room yet, but it's closer than you think. If you're one of the millions that got a connect in recent weeks, this technology is sitting next to your television right now. Now you're using it. And for you slow adopters out there, this is the Kinect. It's a small black device that plugs into your Microsoft Xbox gaming console and transports you, the player, into the game. It recognizes the shape of the human body and responds to your gestures. There's no controller, no joystick, it just sees you. Pretty cool stuff and a major advance in gaming technology. But what you don't realize, even if you're not into gaming, is that this technology could change the way you live. Since its launch in November, the $150 Kinect has become the fastest selling consumer device in history, shifting 8 million units in just its first two months. Yeah! This lucky man didn't have to wait in line for his Kinect. As an editor of the technology blog Engadget, Ross Miller gets to play games for a living and he explains how the Kinect works. So what we have here is we have three sensors. The one in the middle is very much like your webcam. It's what you see on your cameras, you see on your front of your phones now. And these two actually work together to kind of get a sense in three dimensions what is in front of you. It uses infrared um, beams to kind of project little dots. And this reads the dot and says, okay, this is forward, this is back. It kind of gives you a sense of the depth of the room. Okay, so 3D technology is great news for gamers, but it doesn't end there. And this is where it gets interesting because there's another community who have harnessed the Kinect's potential far beyond the gaming world, the hackers. What really jump-started the uh, Kinect hacking scene was uh, Adafruit Industries, uh, who set out um, what ultimately became a $3,000 bounty um, for someone to kind of figure out how to get the Kinect to talk to the computer. And it was this engineer in New York who kicked off what became a revolution in gesture technology. She set up a competition for the first person to hack the Kinect. We're trying to allow people who bought this Kinect, they bought the hardware to use it for more than Microsoft maybe would have initially allowed them to. Hi there. It's actually surprisingly easy to interface with this device. So. And within days, a hacker in Spain posts on the web free software to do just that. Limor Fried got what she was after, a way for Kinect's 3D video to be used with a computer rather than an Xbox. In other words, repurposing the Kinect for uses beyond gaming. What uses? Well, check out kinecthacks.net and you'll see. It can be anything from controlling a robot, to puppeteering, to actually getting a tune out of an air guitar. And yes, they've already come up with a sex application. Anything that utilizes your body's movements. This is the brand new world of gesture technology. And while it might be hard to see how something like this will have any effect on your life, there's no doubt that some application like it will soon be entering your home. So even if it's just to access recipes while your hands are unavailable, there are developers all around the world figuring out ways to bring gesture technology right into your life. And in universities too, would you believe that within a couple of months of its launch, there are already courses teaching students the science of Kinect hacking. And it's able to analyze the distortion of these dots and therefore determine... So the Kinect is like the holy grail of low-cost 3D video. It is perfect for artists, engineers, roboticists, medical uses, everything. And stuff that was previously impossible or so expensive is now off the shelf for $150. And its low price is why this technology is significant. 3D video has suddenly become available to everyone. And this could really change how we interact with the digital world. But hold on, this piece of technology has been hacked. Isn't that illegal? Here's an intellectual property lawyer who knows a lot about technology. So is hacking illegal? Hacking can be illegal. An argument can be made that you are not hacking into the Kinect. You are merely using it for a different purpose. Um, along the same veins, an analogy would be if I sell you a chair. 
and, and you have a right to use the chair, you've paid me for the chair. But you don't use it as a chair, you use it as a ladder. You're not taking apart the chair, you're not changing the chair, you're just using it for a different purpose. And that may not be protectable or enforceable by me, the seller of the chair. So it sounds like there's a misconception around the term hacker. Hacker, as it's being used here, is kind of a misnomer. When you hear hacker, you think, um, you know, these devious people who are stealing your credit cards. What hackers are really doing is just finding a new way to repurpose technology. It's taking a piece, it's like, well, this is a gaming unit. And they're thinking, well, what else can I do with it? I'm a researcher at MIT, and I'm a hacker. That's right, a hacker at MIT, and Garrett has spent the last four months repurposing the Kinect. It's nice to, you know, wave your arms around and have it actually do real things. It's actually why I got into robotics in the first place. Garrett Gallagher created the Minority Report interface. He was one of the first hackers to explore the potential uses of the Kinect's gesture technology and has made prize-winning hacks in the process. But to make this happen, he had first to see the world through the Kinect's eyes. As you can see here, I have the 3D point cloud and this is not what you would normally be seeing with the um, Kinect hooked up to your Xbox, but this is the data that the Xbox is actually getting. And it's up to um, Garrett's imagination what yeah, to do with this data. Uh, it doesn't actually matter what the shape is. Like creating a synthesizer with just a pen and paper. By programming the Kinect to recognize different forms, Garrett is able to assign specific commands to these shapes for the computer to follow, in this case to play notes. And it detects when something is over that button, and if it's close enough, it makes a sound. These are very early days in the world of gesture technology, but judging by the ideas that have already been inspired by the Kinect in the short time since its launch, it makes you wonder what's coming next. I did get a robot to pick up my lunchbox. But how useful is that? Okay, not very useful. But it doesn't take much imagination to come up with some valuable applications. In Moscow, they've already come up with what might be the first commercial use of Kinect's gesture technology, an interactive shop window. But looking more into the future, this orthopedic surgeon is interested in what Kinect technology can bring to his field. He already uses the most cutting edge surgical techniques in his operating room and can see a day where some of the medical Kinect hacks in development will become reality. This uh, gesture technology is incredible. I mean, I, I uh, am just looking into the future and I see p the potential of having a CAT scan or an MRI literally right in front of your eyes. You'd be able to whisk it in front of you and use it uh, in real time uh, in a surgery. And the most uh, science fiction type thing, which is what I always love, is uh, potentially not even touching a patient. For sterility reasons, it's safer. Wouldn't it be interesting if somebody was in Russia and I was operating in New York? That's the future. And that might be quite a long way off, but there are Kinect hacks whose practical applications are right around the corner. For example, a team at Georgia Tech are developing software that allows the Kinect to read sign language, which after all is just another form of hand gesture. And what of the military? I think the military is absolutely would be interested in, in something like Kinect. It gives a cheap way to control a small you know, helicopter robot and things like that, or a robot that could be used to clear routes or, or look for improvised explosive devices in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. The military has strong links to many of the research universities, funds research at, at these places, um, and really keeps up with a lot of what goes on, including you know, things that might seem as trivial as, as hacks by students. And Microsoft too are keeping an eye on the Kinect hacks. In a statement they said, the enthusiasm in the scientific community around the potential application of the Kinect is exciting to see. We do note, however, that any of these uses of the Kinect are not licensed or authorized by Microsoft. So what exactly is Microsoft after here? I think we're seeing a bit of a shift lately in the way companies are approaching how to deal with these issues. In the past, it's been very protectionist. This is my product, this is my operating system, don't touch it. This idea of repurposing technology is becoming more and more accepted by companies. Um, they don't necessarily want you to hack their machines or their software. However, if they give the consumer the latitude, the ability to repurpose some of their software and make it their own, 
the companies can gain market share and also learn from what the customers are doing, what the market wants. <laughs> A future that looks like Minority Report might not be here quite yet, but going by Microsoft sales figures for the Kinect, the market wants gesture technology. And while it's still in its early development, and no one knows which way the technology is going, it is fun to imagine how it will become part of our lives. And Kinect hacks are just the start of that future.